Good morning, everyone. My name is Joe. Call us Victor Echo One Bravo Whiskey Victor. It's located in the east coast of Canada in the province of New Brunswick. Anyway, what we're looking at this morning is the S Bit X. Just a little review over some of the things I've been playing with uh, since I've gotten it, which is about two weeks. So there's the unit itself. Um, what you're looking at now is Grid Tracker. Um, but uh, anyway, there's the the basic rig. I've got the uh, external monitor plugged into it right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's what the side looks like. And I've got a stand there that uh, was printed out on my uh, 3D printer and it gives it a very good angle. So back off here a little bit. So basically what you're seeing here is the roster and that is all the information that um, the grid tracker is grabbing from uh, uh, WSJTZ in this case. So let's have a look at the external monitor. Uh, and uh, we'll look over at grid tracker. That's grid tracker. And right now I'm doing CQ and um, someone in Poland has answered. And you can see the red line there transmitting right now. And if you look over at W. Um, S J T Z. Uh, you can see that we're going to about right here, right now in the transmission, right there. Um, and it's an SQ seven KM, and it's an auto CQ. These are some of the extra features that are on the uh, the Z version of W S J T. So W S J T Z is basically. Um, WSJTX with um, extra things have been added on. Quite a few different features actually. And so that's what you're looking at here on the left hand side. And Grid Tracker also, when it um, uh, gets a call that I'm looking for as far as uh, when I've connected or whatever, it will look it up. And if it's in North America, you'll get all kinds of detail. So there you have it. This is a, a 24 inch monitor. And so most of the time when I'm doing things, I actually um, do all the connections from down here, which is uh, over here. I'm moving around a little bit. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can get a decent... Uh, right about there, I think, is relatively... So you can see right now um, I have um, the options here that tell me what I really want to see or not see. And right now... Um, it's you know just kind of all the features are on and I'm looking at it and uh, but I can see what's interesting CQ if I'm if I want to um, connect to any one of these it's a matter of double clicking it and um, let me just pick uh, anything here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off of um, the auto uh, CQ right now so let me get my mouse back up here and get a little closer. I take the audio CQ off and uh, clear that area just because it's there. We go and and what happens is um, again this is the the uh, program that's actually doing all the work, the decoding, and the other programs are kind of the uh, gooey fluff if you want to look at it that way. So I'm going to erase all what it's heard, and by doing that you can see uh, Grid Tracker has also. I uh, made everything disappear, but as soon as they start coming back, which they are now, uh, in a second, you'll see here. So if you start looking up above here again, you can see it's starting to populate again. And this is a direct reflection here uh, that is actually being put onto Grid Tracker. And then on Grid Tracker, I've, I've asked it uh, to display a call roster or rooster I guess roaster roster and um, it now shows those particular signals now I'm going to actually um, go down here and put only CQ so now what you'll see here is strictly CQ so these options here allow you to uh, filter out whatever you're looking for they tell you the status um, and it's decoding basically now and um, 
it's receiving. So it's really a, a great visual display because it tells you everything, the signal strength, where it's located, um, any messages, how long the signal is, how old it is, where it's located, etc., etc. And and then the grid tracker itself, the beauty of it is that um, it's always telling you what's going on. Um, those blue lines you see is what my station's been hearing in the last 24 hours. And over here, um, let me see here, I'll populate it. And she should populate, there you go. So in the last 24 hours, there's been 2,700 calls that this system has seen. So I'll shrink this over here a little bit. So you get more than that. I'll, and this can either be your, your mouse or whatever the case is. You can blow it up. And you can present it in many different ways. Those are active calls right now. Other people that are talking. And I can hover over them and see who they are. Uh, oh, there's someone right there. And I'm located right here in that area there. So, so let's just put it back here. And these are the calls. So let's go down below and um, look at the grid tracker stuff that it's received. And let's see here who we're looking for. Let's say Nebraska. I don't see him too often. We'll see if he's available. He's calling CQ. And that disappeared. Okay, so let's try um, Montana. And as soon as I clicked on it, the log information came up. Um, and my system is enabled. And it's trying to get a hold of uh, the one that I clicked on. So it's as if I had clicked on it uh, on this program here, the uh, WSJTZ. Um, but in reality, I'm just using the, uh, the better interface here visual uh, interface for the um, the calling and all that sort of stuff but it gives you a choice of both it's just kind of handy uh, I much prefer uh, looking at this area because it gives me so much feedback well, let's just see if he's going to answer back here it's 20 meters it's a Saturday morning um, there's activity but um, some of the signals are pretty rough actually some of the reports are quite low and I see it hasn't uh, Hasn't connected up to him. Uh, oh, just looking here. No, not there. So let's do it this way. Let's, um, I'm going to put this across here. It's going to get a little of my mouse here. I'm going to, um, oh, there he goes. Just took a little while. So you can see he's answered up here. And we're now on transmission number three, exchanging reports. Uh, so it just takes a little while there. And of course, um, there's the station in red that I'm talking to right now. And you can see that my call is the, the one that he's calling me. And he's located in St. Charles. And a signal report. Let me see here is seven. And there we go, seven threes. So he's disconnected, and I tell the system to wait for me and have the log pop up. So I can adjust it, whatever the case is. In this case, I'll just um, click the OK, and it's done. Now, you notice I'm not running the actual SBITX um, from the browser, but I can. Uh, I'll, you know, I just log in like normal because it's one, two, three. Um, do a start. And then you're going to see, uh, sometimes you get a double, I'm not sure why. One, two, three. Let's look up here. So now you're seeing the, um, the SBITX program, actually, but in the browser. Uh, I'll shrink it down here uh, to a more, uh, to a smaller area. And, uh, yeah, this bandwidth is way too narrow. Uh, there's this hiccup here, because when I go to hit on here, it should go up to three, but... It only goes up to 21, so I'll manually move it, um, you know, roughly 3 thou, uh, and that's all okay. So basically, I'm going to finish with this, uh, I'll, I'll just disconnect it, 
and um, I'll bring out my menu up here. There's a little area in the corner there that brings the the legend and everything back. I'll tell the log to appear again. And that's it. That's my last call. That's why it's sitting there. So we did get an answer. So let's see. Is anybody else? Um, there's Sweden, minus 11. Let's give them a shot. Uh, this time I clicked on the WSJTZ uh, in the bottom here. If you double click it, then it does the same thing as if I had actually push the button down here on the SBIT X rig. And right now we haven't connected yet. It's just uh, me basically. So we'll see what happens here. There he goes. Oh, we have connected. And uh, we report of minus seven. And you can see up above here we're actively transmitting. I'm going to put this grid away here a bit so we can see the map a little more. I'm going to move it over, move it over, so we can see the actual um, location that it's going to. There's a little bit better picture there now. So you can see that some um, transmissions that are going on between us. And he just did a 73. So my, <clears throat> excuse me, my log popped up. Uh, everything's okay. And we're done. And this will disappear in a moment. It's waiting. 73s have been done. So, in this next 15 seconds or so, everything should go. And you can't tell, but those the little ants, or we want to call them the path that was moving. And there it is. It has disappeared. And we've logged in Sweden. So anyway, that's how it goes. Um, I, we normally run the WSJTX, uh, but through a, a bunch of playing around and, and uh, doing some of this and some of that, and new Hamlib um, uh, libraries and etc., I was able to get the WSJTZ uh, uh, mod 0.81 uh, working. And so, in the next, hopefully, the next couple of days, I'm going to write this all up and throw it onto the group's I/O. And um, maybe I'll make an image as well, and that way someone can download it and not have to do the uh, the build and all that sort of junk. But I'd like to put out the instructions uh, quickly so that I don't forget how I did it. Anyway, seven threes. You have a good day. That's the SBITX here. I'm running it off of Ethernet right now, but you could run it Wi-Fi, of course. I'm running a uh, uh, this power supply right here with the M MJF uh, Auto Tuner. And then I'm running an amplifier. I usually run the SBX around, oh, 50% or less. And then I use the amplifier to bring it up to about 35 to 40 watts. So it keeps it really cool. And I've ran it for 24 hours a day, and uh, so far it's been working quite well. I do have a keyboard hooked up, just because it's handy. And then a mouse. So, 7 trees. Have a great day from BE1BWB.